this entire episode, we're just gonna call this episode a journey with Jawas, all right? <laughs> Chapter 2 of The Mandalorian is finally here guys and first off let's start off the bat I actually thought the first episode was pretty short uh, Clocking in at about 38 minutes after taking out the credits and the intro uh, now episode 2 actually Lost about 10 minutes of time. This episode is actually only about 27 to 28 minutes If you don't include the intro and if you don't include the credits So an extremely short episode. This was a weaker episode in my opinion compared to the uh, season opener Not too much actually happened. We learned probably about three things in this episode and we're gonna break everything down. And hey, by the way, hit the bell, hit the sub. We're doing reviews, uh, reactions to all the Mandalorian, all the Star Wars stuff coming out in the next few months. So subscribe if you haven't already. Mr. Mando and the baby. We're gonna use Mando for short. They are, obviously we saw the last episode, uh, the Mando actually had to kill IG-11 because IG-11's orders were to assassinate the baby. So uh, Mando actually took it upon himself to not kill the baby. At this point, they get sabotaged by a bunch of uh, raiders. Uh, very interesting here because the raiders actually have a tracker beacon on them, which means they were most likely sent to uh, kill kill the baby and also take the baby out. As you can see, uh, the, the last raider, he actually tries to go and take out the little uh, baby Yoda and uh, he fails while doing so. What a fantastic shot here as well. When they were in the little cavern, you could see the reflection on Mando's helmet of the raiders actually jumping across um, uh, above them, which was pretty amazing right up top here. Oh my gosh, that was such such good shot, such such good uh, film work with those guys, absolutely. Mando's got this cool little like magnetized sensor with the uh, the baby, the little baby cradle. He can actually push it around and do whatever he wants with it, which is kind of cool. It kind of makes it look like he's got force powers, so I thought that's kind of that's kind of funny. One thing I do enjoy too is them showing all the battle scars and battle damages that the Mando's been receiving. Even within the, the first two episodes, this guy's been getting messed up. And I actually do en enjoy that. Um, even though he's getting his butt kicked a lot, um, it shows the trials and tribulations of a, let's say a normal character um, in the Star Wars world. We're so catered and we're so used to all the force users and them, them being the most powerful beings that when we actually see the character like the Mando, and he's just a, a, I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's a highly trained assassin, but seeing his abilities and and showing that hey, it's 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 pretty tough doing what you do, uh, it it just definitely brings the universe back down to earth. And one of the main roadblock type fillers that happen in this episode are the Jawas actually, uh, while he returns to his ship. The Jawas have actually stripped his ship entirely. They stole his ship, so he has to retrieve his parts back. He actually fries a couple of these guys, <laughs> which was pretty interesting. And the giant sand crawler, the classic. I loved this part actually with the sand crawl action because we actually saw some more little tricks out of the old sand crawler. I mean, this thing is huge and it's old. Um, it doesn't really, it's not too fast. So it was kind of cool to see like the Jawas opening up little compartments to throw stuff at them. Uh, it had a cool little battle scene, which was which was nice because the sand crawler has been so iconic. And when you see it, you're kind of like the sand crawler kind of kind of sucks as a, as a vehicle because it's just so slow. Uh, but uh, it was kind of interesting seeing how the Jawas defend their turf on the sand crawler. Nick Nolte's character, he's like the savior. I mean, I don't know what Mando would do without Nick Nolte's character, but he returns to him after uh, failing to get his parts back. And uh, Nick Nolte, he actually kind of knows the uh, Jawas. He speaks their language, so he's gonna go talk to him and convince the Mando and him to go get his parts. Second interesting thing, the, these guys, like eating toads apparently <laughs> and after meeting the Jawas and talking to the Jawas uh, it, it was a little funny how they are bartering with the Mando even though they stole all of his parts so it was kind of pissing the Mando off he's like you guys stole my parts you should be giving them back but 
uh, uh, they they want something in return and they want him to go get this egg. It's weird, the whole Mandalorian uh, guild and especially Pablo Pascal's character, it, it kind of gives me like that traditional like Indian vibe, like they are a family. You know, he even says it himself, he, his tribe is always predicated to, to weapons, his, his ancestors. Uh, so it, it feels like it, it feels like that Indian religion in the futuristic version of Star Wars um, for, for the Mandalorian Guild. At least I, I felt that in my perspective. As Mando tries to go and retrieve this egg, he is halted by, of course, most likely the mother of the egg. I actually do not know the name of this uh, creature in Star Wars, so if you guys know the name, uh, post down in the comments below. I would definitely appreciate it. And once again, Mando gets owned. He's been getting wrecked so far these first two episodes. I mean, when it comes to the blurgs in episode one, to the Jawas at the beginning of this episode, to this creature here, uh, it's, 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 he's been getting his butt kicked, so uh, it's uh, definitely been a tough couple episodes for the Mando. This is the biggest part of the whole episode. Uh, we find out that the little baby Yoda creature can actually use the force and it stops this creature in its tracks, levitates them. So a, a lot of theories going around. Could this possibly be a reincarnated version of Yoda who's growing up? Uh, is this just a, a, a completely different creature altogether who can just use the force? Does it have any relation with with any of the past Jedi? We we don't we don't know. We just know that it can use the force. So uh, very interesting uh, that they, they 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 took that there. And this was the most intriguing part of the whole episode. Uh, to me, this was a weaker episode than the first one. Uh, it was an extremely short episode. It had a lot of uh, filler moments in it. This was the big piece, the big takeaway from the episode. He brings the egg back, the prize back to the Jawas. Uh, they crack it on open, they end up eating out of it. Uh, looks like just some, some egg yolk of that creature. So Jawas, Jawas are very, very curious fellows, very curious creatures. And then we get to the building montage. He gets all of his pieces back. Uh, so they actually spend a couple of days rebuilding the ship. He doesn't take his armor off. Mando never takes his armor off. Apparently, he would have. I'm sure he is sweaty as can be in that that Mando armor. <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. That was episode two of The Mandalorian. Let me know down below. Did you guys enjoy the episode? What did you think? For me personally, I thought this was actually a pretty weak episode. We learned a couple of things, but other than that, uh, weaker than episode one in my opinion. Extremely short at 27 minutes. Um, did definitely did it disappoint me no it was still a good watch but i'm i'm ready to see more i'm just more anxious so uh there you guys have it hey hit the bell hit the sub tour trying to get to that first milestone of 1k subscribers i would love it if you were along for that journey so i'll see you in the next video and be easy